Hey guys, it's Will. In this video, I will be teaching you how to make simple fried rice. And it's going to be really healthy. There's going to be a lot of vegetables in there, some meat, some chicken. It's going to be great. And uh, honestly, this is my first time doing it this way. And so it's going to be an instructional video and also me doing it for the first time. So it's going to be entertaining and instructional as well. And more so than that, it's it may inspire you because um, my whole idea behind food is that uh, anyone can cook to a certain extent if they make the effort to learn how. They may not be you know experts at, at cooking, but they can cook to a certain level. Second, as far as actual food goes, I truly believe that you can get food and make food that's healthy, that's affordable, and tastes great. So those are my three principles to all the cooking videos you'll see. Uh, I mean, save for a few. Like I do like eating unhealthy foods from time to time, but generally speaking, there's so much you know benefit to being healthy. So my three principles are always cheap, tastes great, and healthy. So keep those in mind. And so I got this, uh, you know, recipe off another YouTube video, and this channel does the same thing. It's called Marlin Doll, and uh, basically that's the whole premise of their channel as well. And so um, I wanted something simple because maybe just like you, I am not that. I don't have the time, and I don't have the enjoyment enough to you know sit there and do like all sorts of complicated stuff to make a dish and that's fun and stuff and it, it reminds me of chemistry because uh, it is kind of chemistry it is chemistry basically especially baking baking is definitely chemistry cooking it can be a bit of an art because you don't have to necessarily follow everything to the t to the millimeter but um you know cooking is so uh you know it, it can be a big ordeal and especially for me because i want to be productive i don't want to waste time I'm usually listening to like an audio book while cooking and I don't want it to take up too much time, you know, drain too much of my willpower, uh, my decision making ability or whatever else. Um, but uh, at the same time, you know, you have to make it fun as well. Um, you can't always have, I don't think it's healthy uh, to always be so hectic, like you have to enjoy life. So that is why I'm here with you guys. And so we will be making a basic uh, vegetable slash chicken fried rice recipe and I have experience with fried rice I've seen it cooked numerous times but this one is a little bit unique in that there's a lot more vegetables and chicken and uh, other things in it that I have never added to the ones I've made in the past so um, I chose this specifically because I'm not the best cook and I'm really just getting into this so the first thing you will need is rice now believe it or not you have to make your own rice so it comes like this and uh, it's usually in a bag so I've already scooped out one cup of rice and basically what you do uh, this is probably enough for one person um, and uh, believe me I like to eat so um, yeah I'm if you don't know me I can literally sit down and eat literally like about three people's worth of food I'm well known for being able to eat. Everyone knows that. I'm cutting back now because I, I'm really about health nowadays. But uh, this is uh, how much you want to put. And all you do is you put it into the rice cooker. So I have the rice cooker here. And you put it into here as so. And then you wash the rice to get out all the dirt and stuff. Um, I usually do twice. You could do it three times. So I just, you know, rinse it out, pour out all the dirty water, repeat it once, twice, sometimes three times. And then, very similar to a laundry machine. Uh, I don't know if you can see that there. Very similar to a laundry machine, you pour it up to the line that says one, because it's one cup. And then you put on the top, plug it in, Push down on the little button and then wait until it pops back up. And now this will probably take about half an hour to an hour to fully cook. 
and boom, your rice is done. And that's probably like the longest wait. The rest is much quicker. So I'll see you later. Make sure, by the way, you pour the right amount of water as precisely as you can because if it's far off, then you will get shriveled up, screwed up rice. Uh, so you want to err on the side of more water than less because if you do more and you screw up, then the rice is just a little bit you know, extra wet, maybe a lot extra wet. And what you can do from there is just heat it up some more and then cancel the heating halfway through until it looks about right yep that's all i gotta say and oh yeah rice cooking is a bit of an art i know this this sounds kind of asian and a bit racist but um it is it's true like proper rice if it's done perfectly all the little strands will just part and fall apart and there'll be each little strand of rice will be its own entity um Generally speaking, most people kind of they get it wrong and it's not perfectly parted and all the rice is just like wet and it sticks together to a certain extent. And some people like that. So it's, it's a bit of a preference. But if you ever experience perfect rice, it is amazing. Like the smell of it, the look, the feel, the taste, it's incredible. And I would say that version, that form is when... Each little grain is perfectly parted because it's heated to the right extent. What's up everyone, it's Will and today I'm talking personal finance. So this is probably one of the core and yet simplest concepts of personal finance. And yet so many people don't understand it and it's not taught in schools. Financial literacy is not taught in schools which is a huge problem because it leads to horrible, horrible mistakes down the line. And I think it's so important. And yet no one teaches this. So what is it? It's basically earn more than you spend. Or technically, more importantly, you should be spend more than you earn. And this is a concept that because so many people have not learned it and implemented it, because just knowing it is not enough, but implementing it, is because so many people have not done this, they have some of them massed enormous amounts of wealth and then had to bite the bullet and regret all the you know horrible debt that they had racked up because they didn't understand this concept mike tyson's a great example he earned millions of dollars every year spent more than that ended up going into tremendous debt um and another person is evil knievel so i was Listening to the audiobook of the billionaire Richard Branson's book, Screw It, Just Do It, it's a very inspiring book. And in it, he mentions this brief story where he had Evil Knievel um, hired as a stunt guy for one of his marketing campaigns for his brand, Virgin. And during the campaign, Evil Knievel turns to him and just very dryly, uh, tells him that, yeah, I earned 50 million this year, but I spent 51 million. But I spent 51 million. And that just kind of sucks. Like, sometimes it's not about how much you earn. Like, people think, oh, if I earn more, then I'll just have it settled. But sometimes it's really just about you controlling yourself. And some people, because they don't know any better, they just unleash and they spend as much as they can. And you still end up negative, which is not good. As always, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, and why I'm with this backdrop is because I am filming a cooking video. So uh, stay tuned for that. The next problem is that the chicken I was supposed to use is frozen solid and this will probably take at least 12 hours to defrost so we are not using chicken today we're just going super healthy and if you want to use chicken however you can just buy it at any local supermarket 
and it's usually not this frozen unless you put it in the freezer, which uh, I did. And you just chop it up in little pieces, throw it onto the pan, and then add any spices or sauces you want. And for me, I usually just add oil. And then if you want to be a little bit unhealthy, you can add garlic powder, which makes it taste great, but not the most healthy. But we're not using chicken today. So instead of that, in place of the protein, which, you know, I definitely prefer actual chicken, but instead of that, we will be using scrambled eggs, which is still really good. And I think it's a staple. Uh, I, it's, it wasn't in the original video recipe, but um, I mean, I am Asian and I do know my fried rice. So um, it's funny because that recipe, you know, no offense to this guy, but uh, you know, they didn't have no scrambled eggs in there. And y'all know that I'm Asian and scrambled rice is like a staple. So that's not technically true. Like you could do anything you want. Uh, and I've heard this numerous times, not from me, but from people who are experienced in cooking. Cooking is an art. Baking is more of a science. If you screw up, like chemistry, you're kind of like screwed. One millimeter wrong, you come out with something disgusting. Cooking, you know, you can shape, shift, do what you want, and it will still taste good, possibly. Sometimes not so much. Um, so yeah, we will be using scrambled eggs, unfortunately. All right, this is how I crack my eggs. Nothing fancy. I know there's probably some better way of doing this, but this is how I do it. You take the egg, put it on the edge of the table, like so, crack it, and simply split it over, and try and be as delicate as you can, and hope as best you can not to get any of the shell in the inside which you kind of sometimes you do and then you have to like pick out every piece and I usually do it with two hands which makes it easier but this time since I'm holding the camera that's not a thing you know people ask on YouTube and some big YouTubers actually say this but they say that you can't be too high production value or too professional in your YouTube videos because then you lose that touch and your audience won't relate to you and you'll get less views and so forth because it's too much like TV and it's not like YouTube where the audience can relate to these people as actually flawed people. And apparently, you know, I've watched a lot of YouTube advice videos and that's one of the things that they say. And apparently one of them said that they had like evidence where they saw certain channels start doing this as they, you know, got bigger and had more money to spend on this stuff and they started getting less views because it was too high production. Now, my personal opinion is that uh, because I've seen many different channels, I think that both ways can work. For instance, let's just take cooking. There are high production, high quality, you know, cooking videos with like, it's super well edited, super well cut, super well filmed, great transitions, you know, little snippets um, in, in the video. And it works really well, like so well. I wish I could do that. I could learn how, but I would not enjoy doing it that way. I would not enjoy making that those videos that much in that way. Um, and, you know, informal videos like vlogs, they can work as well. Maybe not as good um, in certain ways, but, you know, informal cooking videos like the one I'm kind of doing can kind of work as well. And so, you know, honestly, I've seen both mixes work very well. And I think either one can work as long as you keep that YouTube interactability to it. So if you're doing something high production, um, Make sure the value's there, and more importantly, um, keep it interactive. So uh, as far as the high production cooking videos that I've seen work, uh, you know, they still keep it uh, very clearly uh, in a YouTube plane. So they'll have end cards at the end of the video. Occasionally, they'll ask questions to their viewers. They will take feedback from their viewers. Um, and yeah, it's, it's clearly made for YouTube. It's not something that was made on TV that was repackaged for YouTube. So I think that's important. 
And I mean, I know some channels, specifically cooking channels, that have like no, close to no connection. Like it's clearly just for YouTube, but like they don't interact with their fans or anything at all or speak to their fans. Um, and the channel I'm thinking of has over a million subscribers. So I think a variety of things can work is what I'm saying. I honestly don't know. Opinions of mine are subject to change and are just theory. Take them with a grain of salt. So, so after you crack the eggs into this thing, I specifically did it this way, by the way. I put it into this little, you know, plastic pot. And after you do that, you get some chopsticks or any type of mixer. And you mix it until it is completely a yellow paste. So like completely the same color. It's called homogenous, ho homogenizing it. And homogenize is the verb form of the word homogenous, which is the adjective form of the verb form of homogenous, which pretty much means the entire liquid is a uniform color. So the whole thing is not only a uniform color, but also a uniform, you know, um, whatever it is. I, I, don't know. I, I forgot the term. It's not only the color, but also the, not only the color, but also the texture is the same. So we got all types of fruit here, zucchini, carrots, broccoli, all types of peppers. We got red pepper, yellow pepper, and orange pepper. Honestly, I don't think these are, they're all, they're all just peppers basically. And um, I have rinsed them thoroughly clean, fairly clean. And all we're really missing here is mushrooms. I wish we had mushrooms. Mushrooms are very, very healthy. And if you want a book to read on the uh, healthiness of mushrooms as well as other important uh, foods and food groups and activities and habits that you should have to live a longer life my book recommendation is 50 secrets of the longest living people anyhow let's cut these up all done i didn't need many zucchini because um i don't really like them that much and this is more than enough and by the way you can eat these raw and they actually taste better raw so I'm eating this now, it's pretty good. If you've never used chives or green onions in your scrambled eggs, I highly suggest it. It's such a great taste. Unfortunately, we don't have any of those today. But again, it goes back to our cheap and affordable and do with what we can theme. So we're just gonna have regular scrambled eggs. I have the frying pan cooking which pretty much means I put the heat on, turn the heat on, put the frying pan on top, and now we will be adding a little drop of olive oil, and this acts as a non-stick. You can use a non-stick spray if that's what you want, um, and you can also use olive oil, and this is kind of necessary because otherwise, the eggs will stick to the pan, and you can't get it to flip off. Um, and you need to flip it so that you can cook both sides. Olive oil is the best type of oil to use in my opinion. It is one of the most healthy and it has a lot of health benefits. Again, refer to the book 50 Secrets of the Longest Living People. I'll leave that in the description if I can remember. Let me know if I forget. Move the olive oil around so it covers the entirety of the pan so that it can prevent the scrambled egg from sticking all the way. It doesn't have to be perfect, just good enough. Then we simply take the mixed up egg from before and pour it on top.
Now just add a tiny bit of salt and you are good to go. And then break it up into tiny little pieces and put that aside for later. Next, the veggies. So put these in for a minute. Same process. Let's go. Ooh. Be very careful when you top this in. Um, there's a little bit of a kickback from the, the steam, I guess. And make sure you stir it around to get both sides. The rice is good to go. Now we will be using oyster sauce, which I've never heard of, as well as soy sauce. So basically, we will be using three tablespoons of oyster sauce. This is one tablespoon right here. This thing is so dirty, so I'm not going to use it, but I'm, I'll use it as a good gauge. Three tablespoons of oyster sauce and two tablespoons of soy sauce. And most likely because I'm not eating that much today, this is how much rice we have. Because of that, I will probably not need that much oyster sauce or soy sauce. So I'll use the proportions, but I will not use three tablespoons. So it'll probably be like uh, one tablespoon oyster sauce and uh, two thirds soy sauce. From here, we just take the rice, put it onto the pan, add the sauce, mix it together. Then we add this and we're good to go. I can't film it because I have to do it with two hands. Bada bing, bada boom. I am honestly amazed that I made this. You know, it may not seem like it, but I was, Kind of scared, not really scared, but you know, unsure if I could turn something I saw on YouTube into its own creation. And it seemed a lot tougher than it actually is. But again, let me tell you, this is my first time. And I've mentioned I've done fried rice before, so you're probably wondering, I thought you said I you did it before, Will. Well, I've done fried rice in the sense that like basically it's cooked the rice and then maybe add some scrambled eggs and then pour on some soy sauce but this was a little bit more extensive so I'm proud to say that this is my small win of the day and every small win that you have and you acknowledge and you um, pretty much pat yourself on the back for I think it helps you get along in the day Especially for people who are, you know, um, you know, depressed or may need a little boost. So uh, this is my small win for today. So right now, um, I'm pretty much just mixing this the sauce I added in there. I didn't, uh, you know, there's multiple ways of doing it. Some people don't even add the sauce, or at least they don't they don't do it to the rice because they want to keep the rice a white color, and they want to have a specific taste to the rice. Other people, they want that brown colored rice. Um, personally, I, I fluctuate. Sometimes I prefer white, sometimes I don't. Uh, for now though, I did it like this. Probably next time I'm gonna try it again, but um, uh, the difference would be that I would uh, only pour the sauce onto the, the eggs, not even the eggs, just the vegetables, and then um, nothing on the rice itself. Um, but yeah, if you want to be more Asian and you want to pour it onto the actual rice, uh, well, technically American Asian, that's, that's how they do it. As, as for actual Chinese, I would say they prefer white rice for sure. So there you have it. That's, that's how it looks. And now for the tasting. All right, guys, I've done cooking videos before. Some I filmed, some I have not filmed and put on YouTube. Um... And some have gone really terribly, you know, the, the food is just went just nasty, didn't taste good. Um, I mean, it's fried rice, how bad could it be? I'm guessing it's going to be exactly how I imagine it. I mean, I've had it numerous times from fast food restaurants, but this is definitely more 
healthy and organic. Uh, so I'm going to try it. I'm picking up a scoop now. It has eggs and it seems like a, a little bit of broccoli on there. Let me taste how it, uh, let's, let's see how it tastes. Pretty much as expected. The oyster sauce is definitely there. It's a peculiar taste. It, this, this fried rice is unique in that I've never had it with uh, green peppers in it. So let me taste a bit of that. Ooh. Hot. It definitely has a bit of a kick. Um, you can definitely taste the pepper. I like it. I like it for sure. Um, uh, you guys may not know this, but I have a very picky palate. Um, I would put this at a 5 or 6 out of 10 in terms of 10 being the best food I've ever eaten. I mean, I'm kind of picky and I've eaten a decent amount of pretty good tasting food. Um, I put this at a 5.68 out of 10. Uh, not bad, not bad, definitely healthy, um, definitely pretty decent. It's not something that's, uh, it's definitely not uh, cardboard, um, but it's, I mean, it's decent, it's decent food. I, again, I am a bit picky and I do like my protein. Uh, so it's pretty good. Uh, the carrots, you know, not my favorite thing in the world, but yeah. As always, like and subscribe, thanks for watching. I'll see you later and peace.